What's going on guys? <clears throat> Junior's Fishing Company here with a panfish um, fly time video. So in the video before um, that little intro I kind of talked about what and why and how. Um, today I'm going to tie um, kind of like a copper johnny you know with the wire wraps the back biots and stuff like that but um, a nymphy a nymphy pattern uh, just to imitate something in the water um, so I've already kind of prepped this because I'm using this bead this is a you can't the stickers over it but this is a nymph head evolution um, mayfly swimmer head um, extra large in olive I, I really like them but they're super wobbly um, and you want them to sit a certain way so I wrapped some O2O wire and then I just shot just a tiny bit of super glue in there um, and I had to let it dry so um, you can see it's um, it's stuck on there I'm going to start with 70 to near this is olive green it really doesn't matter um, because I'm you're really not going to see much of this thread anyway except for maybe on the way back um, but there's a lot of green in this anyway so I almost went with like a brown or something like that but I'm gonna have a chance to tie a bunch of these in different colors maybe even some super bright ones so I'm gonna change the positioning on my hook so I can put my biots in these are magpie turkey biots turkey biots um, goose biots I've got duck biots my brother-in-law hunts and gives me tons of wings all the time um, it's really just the size but if you use I mean I'm not gonna tie them in you know like a hook and a half long so I really don't think it matters a ton and I always even use the ones you can't really tell but they're not perfectly pointed, um, which is all right. These are from, I think I got these from Charlie's Fly Box. I really like them. Um, so I'm gonna kinda just measure out less than a full shank, but um, I would rather have them be long than too short. I'll build up just a little ball right here I'm, I love goose biats but I hate them at the same time they can be so finicky it's crazy so I'll just put those on I'll try and get them where I want them to it's always hard to tell when you put the hook this way if they're straight or not you kind of have to look at it at an angle um, same length ish good enough for me now I'm gonna come in and trim these ends and then I'll just kinda bury <clears throat> sorry I sound like an old man I'll just bury the rest um, I don't want to add a ton of bulk to this. Because I'm going to use medium wire. Get down. And <clears throat> I just don't want too much bulk. So those are decent enough. Um, I can kind of pull them out to splay them a little bit. Uh, not perfect, but they will do. <clears throat> so now again, I'm going to put in some brown, or not brown, um, Sculpin Olive UTC Medium. 
I use a ton of medium wire even on smaller like a Higa's SOS where you wrap just a few wraps on the body <clears throat> I like the medium I use a, a lot of brassy too and some small I'll use small on tiny little stuff but um, I really use a lot of medium so I'm going to put this right behind my lead wraps I don't want to put it on my lead wraps that's going to add too much bulk and then I'm going to wrap it right on my side all the way down to where my biots are I'm going <clears> to <throat> uncord my thread and I'll come back up of a taper just a little bit go down three quarters of the way every time I do this I'm gonna spin my thread just so it's flat I'll go down about halfway spin my thread again and I'll go down just a little now, <clears throat> on a lot of flies that I tie, I use this hook point as where, because on this I'm going to wrap wire up, but then I'm going to have some dubbing and legs. I usually will wrap my wire right to the hook point, which means I'll put my lead wraps right on that hook point-ish, right? So <clears throat> now I know all of my lead is going to be the upper body and then where my wire is is going to be my lower body so I don't really have to worry about tapering this lead I say lead it's lead free I don't have to worry about tapering it because it's going to be covered in dubbing anyway so <clears throat> I'll get my thread all the way up I wet my fingers a little bit and then I'm going to do really I'm going to do touching wraps, but I'm going to put a ton of pressure on this wire. This medium wire loves to get loose. And so you want to keep tension on this the whole time. If you let go, or if it slips, which, you know, it will, then you're going to have to sometimes even unwrap all the way back down because... If it gets loose, I mean, you'll notice. A big bluegill probably won't, but so I'm gonna go past where I need to, and I'm gonna keep tension on this. I'm gonna wrap about halfway, then I'm gonna put, I usually do four wraps behind. Then I'll put usually three or four in front, and then I'm going to lay it <clears throat> down, and I'm going to give it like three more. Because again, if this gets loose, you're going to have you're going to see gaps in your in your sp spun wire. Now you're going to see me use this tool a ton. This tool right here, it's got a little hole on one side and then a point on the other. This is like a, a knitting stick. <laughs> I don't know what they're actually called. I bought this at Joanne Fabrics, any craft store, right? And I use this tool as much as any other tool I use. You're going to see me use it a ton. And I'll probably say what it is in all these videos. But... Um, it just works great with this little hole. If that wire's sticking up a little bit, I can kind of get it in there and flatten it out. It works. You'll see me use it a ton. So that's what this is. I can't remember what they're called. I think they came in two packs and it was like 12 bucks. So I'm going to put, you know, a Copper John. A lot, he goes SOS too. They just have a little tinsel or anything that you fold over at the end. Um, any musky fisherman 
that ties. You've got I have bag a, a literally a gallon bag full of tinsel that I have kind of just transferred over to my fly stuff. Um, I'm gonna put that right on top, and again I'm gonna go back to about my hook point, maybe a little bit before. It's straight, now I'll put my legs on. So, musky fisherman, bass fisherman, any bass fisherman that fly ties, you've got a bag of old skirts. Um, so I can't tell you in the description what brand this is or what, um, but yeah, spinnerbait skirts, <clears throat> jig skirts, the small rubber um, silicone, these work great for legs. So this is kind of like a barred black and olive. Um, I'm not worried about the length of my legs right now. I just want to put them, you can, it, you know, it's totally up to you if you want them more on the side or on top. You can do 10 legs, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna kinda put these not perfectly necessarily in the middle. I'd rather have them a little higher up than down. I'm gonna give a couple good wraps and make sure that they're not gonna go anywhere when I put my dubbing and stuff on. And I'm just going to leave this how it is for now. This is actually going to be a pretty big body, it looks like. I always say that, and then it turns out to be a small body. So I'm going to work my thread behind my legs back to where my tinsel starts. Now dubbing, I use a ton of dry fly dubbing, but for this I wanted some flash. So this is uh, Hair's Ice Dub, and I'm going to use black. Black, so it's black, it's got um, just some green flash in there. I'm going to take out a decent chunk, but I'm going to put this in, I'd rather dub four, you know, put four on than one giant one. Um, I don't want too much, and I don't necessarily need this to look like super buggy. Um, it's going to end up looking buggy because it's like a rabbit and stuff, but um, I've yet to tie this with the dry fly dubbing or something like that. So it's behind my legs. Maybe I'll put just a little bit more. And yeah, this stuff is... real buggy. But that's alright. So now I'll work in front of my legs. Get my thread there. And now I'm going to cut my front legs, and you can have these, you could keep it like that if you want. Some giant antenna or something. Um, the only thing I want these legs to do is go out. I don't want them to go back with the other ones. That's really the only thing I want to do, and as I say that, I probably just jinx myself. I'll embarrass myself on camera. So I'll put more dubbing in. Get out of there. Then I'll work in front. And I'm going to end up putting more dubbing on because I'm going to take my tinsel. I'm going to bring it over. Now what I do with my 
tinsel wraps is I make sure it's right on top and then I'll put my thread down but I'm not gonna I'm not done right I'm not gonna ignore it you know I'm gonna take my bobbin in my left hand and I'm gonna put some tension on it because as you wrap it's gonna want to rotate and so if I hold it where I want with maybe two good tight wraps I usually just pull it down to the eye so I know it's at least kind of where I want it to be this body did turn out really big and then I'll give it now I know it's locked in there and I don't have to worry about it rotating on me when I put this next dubbing in so I'll trim that off if you trim off a leg you've got a three-legged bug so and I'm gonna trim these legs before I put my last dubbing on so you can kinda see I want and they're hanging but I want these out I don't want them to go back. If any, I kind of trying to make an X. Just pull these out. You can always cut twice. Cut my back ones. So they're not perfectly. Um, that's getting in my threads way. So they're kind of. I mean, they're facing out a little bit but they're definitely too long. And then I'm going to show you one last little thing that I do that I haven't seen a lot of people doing. I'm not saying I'm inventing it, but cause it's not that complicated. So I'm going to trim, I don't know, do you want the back legs longer, the front legs longer? Who knows? Or the same. So I've got four little legs there. Now I'm going to put just a tiny bit more dubbing just to really cover up. Because if I put too much on there, too many of these wraps, it's going to, my front legs are going to want to fall back. Not 100% perfect, but I'll take it. So I'm going to whip finish. I usually just do three turns because um, a lot of these jigs don't return to my box in the winter especially if I've been fishing outside when they freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and then you catch you know if you're on a school of four inch sunfish you're gonna catch 40 of them and these things just get destroyed so one last thing I'm gonna do and I'll trim this you don't have to watch me trim it I'll trim it after I turn the video off I'll take some loon thin and my little light and I'm gonna just barely put I'm leaking too much I'm just barely gonna put some UV on the tinsel this is how Charlie Craven does it so this is how I do it holds it far away and kinda just beats it on there but this allows that tinsel, you can maybe even see it in the video, to just be crazy flashy. Um, that's what I do whenever I'm pulling over a tinsel over my body. I'll always do that. I've thought about, I'm thinking now, I might try one of these with peacock curl instead. Um, it'd be a little bit trickier wrapping it around the legs and stuff. Um, we'll see you in the next one.